You must be wondering what is going on here. I think you will have guessed by now. Today is the 27th of September and although it is autumn, it's not too late to do harvesting. So this is what we've been harvesting. And this is Padma Priya, air layering expert. And he did all these on maples that we planted in the ground. These maples were planted probably only about five, six years ago. And they were planted when they were only like a quarter inch thick like that. And can you see the thickness of these? Five and six years in the ground and the trees have grown as thick as that. But look at the air layering. These air layerings were all done at the end of April or early May. I think more like early May. Yeah, no, these were done eight weeks ago. Eight, eight weeks, weeks ago, weeks exactly eight ago. weeks, exactly Padma Priya told me. Ago. Eight weeks ago, and look at them. Every single one of them have rooted. And they are not small, they're all massive air layering. This one is about four feet tall. So this is what we've cut off and see the thickness of the trunks really thick trunks and in fact he is taking the radical step of putting it straight away <laughs> in a bonsai pot so it's eight weeks from a tree to a bonsai pot that is incredible so we reduce the foliage so that it doesn't make too much demands on the roots Look at this for an air layering. So obviously, we can't let all this foliage remain on the tree. Look at the bindweed, you get weeds at all. Just shows how vigorous our trees are and how rich our soil is. So I always remind people that when you do an air layering, you need to remove some of the foliage because if you leave too much foliage, it will make excessive demands on the root system and because the root system is relatively small compared to the size of air layering or tree, if you leave all that foliage, it will stress the roots too much and it may not take successfully. So the whole purpose of this process now, which is to reduce some of the foliage, is to make the root system uh, more uh, comfortable in sustaining this air layering. So this is what I've done. So from that massive great big tree, I prune all this off. And now we will plant it in, uh, I think this one probably in pure, pure sphagnum moss. But I noticed that, Padmapri, you're mixing a bit of soil as well, isn't it? Yeah, I'm getting it ready for, uh, hopefully it's uh, potting life Straight as away. well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's quite a lot of sphagnum moss still in and around yes. the roots. But I think so. you've got to treat each case uh, on its own merits, but you can see how vigorous this root ball is. So there's no problem. You can put a mixture of sphagnum moss and soil with it. So that is that one done. Let's take another one, just to reinforce the process. Look at this one. Look at this one. <laughs> My goodness me. This is going to be a massive bonsai straight away. Okay, because this is so big, I think we've got to be a bit cautious with this one. I can't leave too much foliage on this one. It will really stress the tree. So again, let's reduce some of this. It will produce new branches very easily next year. So don't despair, don't be impatient. You can't have an instant large tree straight away. Just a little bit of patience and you will be rewarded in uh, great measure several times over so I think this we will have to plant in a deepish pot because this tree will not uh, stand up if you put it in a shallow bonsai pot so there are such a lot of these examples but again what I'm trying to emphasize every time is all this foliage because it's so vigorous has helped to generate the roots because if the top is strong it makes the roots strong as well so all that foliage, as I say, don't be greedy. It will grow again next year. So get rid of it and it will give the roots a chance to grow. I've 
hope you don't mind the repetition. And look at this one. Look at the potential of this. This is going to be like a multi-trunk or a twin trunk. How interesting is that? They're amazing. They're Absolutely amazing. Yeah. I think this year we've had a lot of success and actually our layer, air layering, we did it over only two weekends. Uh, two weekends. The first weekend was in end of April and then there was another spell when Padma Kriya did it with one of our apprentices and this was just one day's work. Can you imagine if we spent days and days doing it? You won't have to import or grow trees at all. You can be producing ad infinitum. Endless number of bonsai simply by air layering. Simply by air layering. And the stumps in the ground look amazing for the uh, bonsai trunks, as well. If you go and thick. have a look at the stumps, yeah. you know, they're ready-made bonsai in ready the ground. Ready-made bonsai. Yeah. So, there you go. So there's lots more to go. I don't want to bore you. Every single one is strong. And you notice that I always advocate using the junction, I mean the twin trunks, do particularly well because for some reason at a junction there are more oxens in the tree and for that reason you get a better success rate. I don't know how far that is true. I was always told that, but we practice that nonetheless. But when you think that when we do the single trunks, that is also successful. So we need to do lots more experimentation to see what is right. And as you know, on the nursery, we do a lot of experiments because uh, this is part of our uh, enjoyment in growing bonsai. We are not here just for the money. We are here for the joy and pleasure of researching how plants grow, how bonsai grow. And we all are part of that process. Always bear in mind that you don't always have what you call the monopoly of knowledge. We always have to be open-minded and see what works for other people. I have learned a lot from Padma Priya because he does things in a slightly different way and I'm always eager to learn from other people what they do because sometimes what they do can give you an insight as to what you may be not doing properly or there's always a better way. Always remember that, that there's always a better way of doing things. Just because you've done certain things in a certain way it doesn't mean that you are right. Other people have other methods of doing things and it's such a pleasure to learn from other people. Even when I do my bonsai classes there's always a little trick that a student has that you may not have thought about. So seeing what they do is always refreshing in a way. So I will now leave Prima Prayer to do the rest. All I can say is that it's really, really exciting. Just to show you how we develop our bonsai. If you look at this cut, this I dare say was an airing from the previous year. And where we cut it, the new leader grows. So this is how we produce taper. A lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't cut a tree to get taper. But to get taper, you've got to cut. You see how this taper is developing from there to there. And if I cut it there, you get some more taper. So this is how taper is created. And when you think that this is all one year's work, it is absolutely astonishing what you can achieve in one year. So here's to a lot of air layering. And here's to a good year. I know we've had a difficult year when it's been very hot and the sun has burnt a lot of the maple leaves. But on the other hand, this hot weather has also encouraged all these air layerings to develop so fast. So we have had a good year. And thanks to all the efforts of all our staff, we are producing a lot of bonsai ourselves no need to import. I know that during this pandemic importation of Japanese plants has become almost impossible but thank goodness we are self-sufficient in bonsai because we produce all our own. So this is how we produce our 
maple bonsai. So thank you very much, Padma Priya. You're I welcome. Hope our <laughs> viewers have enjoyed this. Thank you.